Hey everybody, hey you 12, thanks for coming along. Right, okay, so this is Shapes Lesson 1. Uh, I've been just reminded of by my students, oh, I've got a problem with my Wi-Fi. It says, connection is currently unstable. Move closer to, oh, stupid thing. It's been working so well up to now. Can I, shall I refresh it? That's a bad idea, isn't it? Yeah. I think that's it. That's it. I'll just remove this thing from there. There we go. It still says connection poor. Don't know why. But uh, Sian, do me a favor. Can you just tell me whether or not the streams are poor quality? I should be able to check, to be fair. That's a bit of a nightmare, isn't it? Whether or not the streams are poor quality. Is it lagging? I'm it's lagging massively. Check, That's a bit of a nightmare. So I don't know why it's lagging so much, but it is. It means that there's probably a problem with the, the school's Wi-Fi. Uh, how much data do I have on my phone? I can hear fine, it's just your camera. I know, but it'll drop into crazy low quality. I can fix this. I've got enough data. Should be able to stream off it. So let's do, uh, um, um, um. It usually fixes itself, it's just not mobile hotspot. This is a really bad idea to stream my data off my phone, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's going to chew you through all my data. How much data do you have? I don't know, a couple of gig. It's going to be entertaining, isn't it? Let's give it a whirl. I have done it before. Doing something. Right, I'm now streaming off my phone it still says i've got a poor connection oh it's 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 good it's going up okay fab okay let's get rid of that now right yes now it's fine it's not stupid right so this is shapes lesson one um I'll, I'll let's just crack straight on with this guys so this should hopefully be a nice recap for those people who've already done this in school Switch over to this guy. Right, so that's Shapes Lesson 2, but I didn't, I, because I, I obviously had a lesson in school when, I, when this was happening, guys, so I didn't do it live on YouTube, So, it, but it's worthwhile having the com complete collection. So I'm going to get rid of that. Sorry, guys. So AS Shapes, Shapes of Molecules Lesson 1. Molecules Lesson 1. My learning objectives is know your base shapes. No, I'll just put no base shapes. No base shapes. Un be able, I will put that on. Be uh, base shapes. Be able to, uh, to uh, use method. Use method to build shapes. To build shapes. Yeah, and then I just put understand double bonds. Understand double bonds. Okay, so first learning objective, this idea of base shapes. So molecules themselves have, uh, have shapes and you guys have been introduced to these, um, in, even in GCSE, you see shapes and don't even realize they exist. So a couple of examples that you must know for, for A level. So EG, uh, by the way, no, this is not an EG. This is a nota bene, nota bene. So specific examples that it's worth knowing because they're weird, yeah? So the first one, of course, is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, if I said to Oliver, what shape is it? That's why, that's why I'm teaching you this lesson. Well done. It is a linear molecule. And that's an on because it's got two double bonds, isn't it? So this is where the understanding the double bonds is going to come in later. So... It has no lone electrons, absolutely correct. There are none on the carbon, yeah? The next one, another really good one to know is um, water, of course. Water, of course, is another one. Shapes-wise, please, Shazza. Um, oh, sure, I will take it, V-shape, happy with that. I don't like that name. Okay. I prefer bent, you can give either name. Yeah, by the way, there is an old name which is angular, but it has since been deleted. So if, if you use that one, you'll probably lose it in an exam. So it's useful to know these. 
So, by the way, I'm also going to give one that has come up in the last couple of exams, which has been really annoying for me. So these are just, again, extras. So if you have, um, this is sulfur trioxide. Uh, is, that, is that the one I want to use? I believe it is. Yes, sulfur trioxide was on an exam. So looking at that picture, Russell, what shape would you say it was? Is the right answer. Good man. Can I just say, I love the fact that you gave that instantaneous, outstanding knowledge right there. That's trigonal planar. Last one just to mention, which is a big, big old monster. Yeah. And this was this this came up on an exam, and I really didn't appreciate Ed Excel for this one. That's sulfuric acid. Now you learn sulfuric acid, but you don't learn it as its shape. Sulfuric acid looks like this from a bonding perspective. Yeah, this is what sulfuric acid looks like. And what shape is it around the oh I bet this is my phone telling me my data is about to run out. <laughs> That's gonna be really funny. No, it's not, it's not, it's okay. We're still surviving. Um, so the question that came up um, was what's the shape around the sulfur? Would anyone like to have a look, have a guess? No, but like, look at the picture I've drawn you. You should be able to look at that picture right there and tell me what shape it is. Well done. This is around the sulfur, it's tetrahedral. So what this actually picks up my learning objective at the end. So how do you deal with double bonds? You treat them as singles. You treat them as a single bond. Because the two bonds are linked in the same structure, they're linked to the same atoms, it becomes, in, in essence, it's occupying the same space. So you can treat it as a single. I'm gonna add one more example to this to learn, which is, an, this, which is this group. So by the way, this comes into organics. This is a ketone, yeah? And if you were to look at this and go, if I was to build the shape around this guy, yeah, what I realize is I've got a double bond over here, a, a single bond here and a single bond here. Would you agree? Now, you, would you agree that there are no lone pairs on the carbon? Yes. You treat the double as a single. So what shape is it going to be, Oliver? Trigonal planar. That's why we treat, that's why you teach double bonds. This is trigonal planar. Yes, I love it. Yeah, fab. So that actually covers, um, I'll do it at the end anyway, but those, those have recently come up in exams and I was a bit upset about the sulfuric acid one because essentially nobody got it. Um, no, that's not true. A couple of people did. They just, they just said tetrahedral because it, it looked a bit like it. By the way, they gave them that picture and said, what's the shape around the S? And people just went, well, it, it, lots of people gave square planar. Loads of people went square planar. Yeah, but a couple of people went tetrahedral. Um, but anyway, so first thing we need to do now, guys, is pick up our base shapes. Now, there are five, five base shapes. Every, now, this is, I say base, five base shapes. These are, I would, I, I, rather than using the word base because of acid base, I want you to say foundation shapes. Everything in chemistry is based, all shapes of molecules are based on these five. Can I just point out, when you get to a degree, you pick up a couple of extras. Yeah, but these are the majority. So, five base shapes. And guys, this is how long it should take you to draw them. Shape number one, linear. Shape number two, trigonal planar. By the way, at this point, I'm going to explain the planar bit. The word planar in chemistry, just to flag this word here, it literally means flat. Yeah, we don't use the word flat because chemists are way too posh for that. <laughs> could, could you imagine? Trigonal flat. Just doesn't flow, does it? Doesn't flow. Shape number three, tetrahedral. Now this is, and by the way, guys, look at my diagram. Yeah, all of a sudden things change. We now have lines, wedges, and dashes. So just to explain, this is tetrahedral, base shape, tetrahedral. And the wedge is coming out at you. Let's add in a couple of little extra bits here. This is out towards you. Yeah, this is 3D, towards you. And this is going away from you. Yeah, away from you. I like it. Okay, so there's tetrahedral. Number four, trigonal bipyramidal. And yes, that's how long it should take you to draw it. This is trigonal. Trigonal 
bipyramidal. Trigonal bipyramidal. And the last one is octahedral. Now, guys, can I just point out that this is a really, really good exercise to do. Octahedral. There you go. There are your five base shapes, folks. At this point, we now need to pick up some bond angles. Now, Stu, whenever I teach bond angles for the first time, students go, oh, my God, sir, do I have to learn all these bond angles? And I'm like, well, yes, but let's be fair. You don't have to learn them. You guys are good at maths. We can, we can figure this stuff out. This isn't complicated. So if I go to Oliver and I go, Oliver, what's the bond angle for linear, please? Do you need to learn that? Yes. No. <laughs> no. Am I allowed to slap Oliver live on YouTube? Am I allowed to do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like a thing, right? <laughs> Shazza, what's the bond angles for trigonal planar? Do you need to learn this? No. No, you don't. It's a 360 divided by 3. Russell, impress me, young man. Bond angles for tetrahedral, please. The Yes! The only one you must, must, must learn. The only one. This is the one you've got to... Can I just point out, by the way, I... I actually had a student about two years ago who went, oh, I don't need to learn it. And I went, oh. he went, I can do the maths on that. And at that point, I went, I don't care. So I just say learn it, just to also mention this to you. By the way, there is another number here. It is also 109 and 28 minutes. 109 degrees and 28 minutes. Let me explain why. The reason being is a single degree is actually broken down into 60 minutes. You guys haven't been taught this in maths? No. Now, there's a, by the way, I, I blame maths for everything, by the way. Basically, they are the, they, they, just, they just cause all my problems. Um, but and I often be like, oh, math, what, what do maths teach you? I'll forgive them for this one. Because in reality, do you know when you're using a protractor, can you actually measure between those degrees? Of course you can't. It's way too small. So I can understand why they wouldn't bother. Does that make sense? Yeah? But there is, you can take one of those tiny little degrees and break it into 60 and you get minutes. Now, what you can realize is you don't need to learn that because they allow you just to say a half. But would you agree it's not a half? It's really close because 30 would be a half, exactly. Does that make sense? But they just allow you to say 0.5. Now, the reason people often say, why are you bothering to teach me that? And I'm like, well, the, the reason being is it came, comes up on multiple choice. And everyone goes, 109.28? What? And I'm like, that's the same as a 0.5. Why would anybody do that and not write 0.48 or 0.4? What do you mean? Like, why couldn't you just leave in the full decimal form? So I'm just going to go tetrahedral bond angle uh, images. Uh, did I put bond angel? <laughs> I put a bond angel. I love a good Bond Angel. 109.46, which is the same as... Uh, 109.4... Oh! Oh, I see what you mean. Because they, they're not looking for this kind of accuracy. Because in reality, it's not... See, 28 minutes, there you go. 109 and 28 minutes. Um, but I'm just... What, what I'm doing is, guys, I'm, I'm giving you these details because it came up on a multiple choice, and if I hadn't done it, the students would have just freaked out and panicked. Yeah? So just bear that in mind. Uh, by the way, it was the, the whole question was a trap. Because the options were 115, 109, 109.28, and then like 120. So what did they all go for? They went, they went for 109 because they were like, oh, 109 is closer to 101.5 than the 28 was. And I was like, that's so evil. They changed the units in one of the pictures. I was like, that's mean, that. Really, really mean. So just, just letting you know. Letting you know. Right. Shazza, what are the bond angles for, for trigonal bipyramidal? Well done. Can I just point out, students often go, oh my god, there's now two bond angles. I'm like, the name has bi in it. Bi means two. It's the only shape with two bond angles. I thought there was a Huh? 
So you have one, right, right. So this point, we now need to start breaking this down. And so they've got 90 degrees and 120. So just to explain this a little bit further, oh, one more, Russell, what's the bond angles in tetrahedral? Well done, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, winner. Right, now I need to do a little bit more breaking down of these shapes. Oh, before I do that, I'm gonna run this as a game. So I've gotta do this, I'm doing this as a live lesson. So guys, everyone find a blank piece of paper, please. Just really quick in your, on your notes, and I'm gonna race you. Base shapes, no bond angles, just straightforward sticks. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. Is anyone gonna beat me? Anyone going to? Done! That's how long it should take you. It's a really good exercise, guys. Yeah. I made one of my wedges as a rectangle. Say again. I made one of my wedges as a rectangle. Well, they get drawing. Look at one of mine. One of mine's become a sausage. Don't worry about it. The, the point being is the exercise of just drawing these out like this is actually really beneficial. It's, it's worth practicing. Because if you can do all five in a nice, like, and I've got that, and someone just goes to all five, oh, this is easy now. Yeah, it's a great exercise to do worthwhile practicing. So we've got our base shapes, right? So just gonna add a little bit extra detail here now, guys. So, and I'm gonna go specifically to the bipyramidal. So what we can now do, can you, let's just do a little subheading. This is where it doesn't let me go up. Right, so we can do axial, axial versus equatorial. Okay, so. In a, in a shape like trigonal bipyramidal, what we realize is that we have two particular uh, bonds here. We have, and I'm gonna color code this, we have the yellow bonds, and these bonds here are called axial bonds because they're on the axis. And yes, the great thing, axial bonds, yeah. Whoops, let's try that again, axial bonds. Yeah, and the great thing is this goes with the planet. Yeah, the axis of the planet, the top and bottom are axials. The next one we've got are ones around the middle. Yeah, the ones around the middle are said to be called the equatorial bonds. Equatorial bonds. Equatorial bonds. I like it. Now, there have been times... In exams, people often go, well, I've never seen this in a question. I'm like, well, I have. I've got 15 years of seeing these questions. Now, here's what they'll do. You see, they'll give you something like this. P, C, and the fact that they draw it for you whenever they do this. They'll give you this. And they will say, I'll give you something like this. And they'll go um, F, whoops. I think it was my pen hiccuping. They'll give you this. There you go. P, whoops. I said P, but it's something else. PCL3 F2. And they will say, what is the bond angles uh, between the axial bonds? Yeah, sometimes they'd say between the phosphorus and the fluorines. Yep, so what you realize is they're asking you to give a bond angle there of 180. But then they'll say, what are the equatorial bond angles? And you're like, oh, well, that there is 120. And then, of course, they could ask you for the bond angle between the equatorials and the axials. So, okay, which, by the way, is always 90, except when there's distortion, which is in the other, uh, no, which is in today's lesson. Oh, we need to do distortion. Anyway, so, do, is this okay, guys? Yeah, just knowing these words, and the great thing is, axis, equatorial, this is easy to remember, around the equator, axial up and down, nice and easy. Go on. Okay, so by the way, I'm just giving you an exam thing here. In reality, the fluorines would probably actually more likely to go more likely to go through the middle, right? Because yeah, by the way, this is now first year degree, so you actually discover later on in chemistry that the axial bonds are slightly longer than the equatorials, just in terms of the way that they're spaced out. Uh, that appears, by the way, in A2 very briefly, but it does appear. Um, so. Okay, so now that we've covered the equatorials and axials and we can be asked those kind of questions, yeah, what we can now do is let's do now building shapes. So building shapes. Now, I've, I've been teaching a long time and there are, there are a variety of methods for this process, but there's only one that I like, yeah? 
And um, so please, please, please don't use any other method but this. Yeah, it's just not worth it. You will spend yourself taking up way too much time and you'll get nowhere with it. So, uh, by the way, I don't know what, it's because my keyboard on a tablet is, it's got a faulty connection now. So if I take that off, it'll stop messing me around. Okay, so now at this point, I'm dropping into a question. I'm gonna teach this via a question. So question number one. So I'm gonna give you A, S, C, L, uh, two. Now I'm gonna go to my periodic table. Um, 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 yeah, uh, I didn't actually, oh, yeah, 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 no, uh, plus one, yes, yeah, so they're going to ask you for, oh, do you know what, let's, no, let's, let's keep this really easy, for now, let's just keep this really easy, um, let's go three plus, that's a good idea. Right, so they're gonna ask you to build these random shape molecules. Yeah, you're never going to have seen them before. And so the first step in this process, step number one, and I'll color code this. Step one, and by the way, you cannot ever miss this. Find central atom, central atom and group number. So central atom is astatine. And its group is number five. So I just write down five underneath it. Yeah. Next, step number two. Step two. Add on, add on attachments. Oop, a bit more space there. Add on attachments. How many attachments do I have, Oliver? Two. I have two. Step number three. Adjust for charge. Well done, adjust for charge. Now this one requires a bit of a conversation. So in reality, if I said, Oliver, this whole process, what are we actually doing here? You are passing electrons. Around who? The central well done. This whole process is relying on us counting the electrons around the central atom. Well, we are now being told here that there's a plus three charge, which means it's lost three electrons. So this is now going to be minus three. So I've got five plus two minus three. Plus four. What? Four. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So adjust the charge. Now this is where I'm gonna add on that little thing, which is if positive, then take away. If positive, take away. If negative, add. Oh, do you know what? I'm just going to swap that takeaway for subtract. Then subtract, not subject, subtract number. If negative, then add. So in this case, it's a plus three, so I'm minusing three from it. The total number is four. Step number four. Step four, divide by two. What's this process? What's this for now, Oliver? No, it's no. not the number of bonds. It's the number of pairs. Yeah, because you may you may have three pairs and only two bonds. Yep, cool. So that we now have, and guys, at this point, step five, draw your base shape. Step five, draw base shape instantaneously i don't care what you do at that point, as long as you just go i've got two two pairs is linear are we in agreement and now guys just put on your atoms a s c l two and put it in a square bracket with a plus three and we're done the shape is linear and it is 180 degree bond angle we're done are you in agreement? Are you ready for your first? By the way, do you realize, by the way, you're never actually gonna use the words. Once, like, you just start drawing these lines from them. It's like down, 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 divide by two, done. Yeah, this, this, this gets quicker the more you practice. Let's try the next one. Question number two. I'm going to give you S, B, S, B, 
BR, BR4, oh, I've got to be careful there. BR4, 2 plus. Is that, is that, I've run on the right thing there. Have I, have I given you a, a mistake? I, I may have done a mistake. Um, plus one? Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, go, 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 go. Do that one, plus one, that's correct. Antinomy tetrabromide. Run it. So, antinomy. Ah, same group, I like it. Attachments. Adjust for charge, minus one. Total, eight, two. And you will draw your shape Look how fast that's it. You look at that. Lob it done. There's your base shape. Right now, add on your people. Yeah, so I'll do them in blue. SB is at the center. BR, 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 and BR. What's my shape? Tetrahedral. Bond angle, please, Russell. Well done. 109.5 as standard. We okay with this? This isn't complicated, right? This is nice and easy. By the way, did you guys ever get? Do you guys get taught the dot and cross way? Spent a week doing that. Like I, I, I can beat them in like I can do, like. Do you realize that we've gone from a molecule to a shape in under like thirty seconds? And with dot and cross, you'll be there for three, four minutes before you're figuring out what the hell's going on. It's an absolute disaster. Don't ever do that. Right? Are you ready for your first challenge? C L. Three plus off you go. First challenge. That one absolutely ruined my air students when that came out that year. Just gonna check it. Yep, absolutely spot on. When that one came out on the AS exam, oh my god, did it freak my kids out. And, and all of it, yeah, you freak you out. No, that's why you, that, 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 you will have, I'm no doubt that some of my kids would have done it. Oh my god. It's, you see, everything's a game. And this question, oh, this was added to my teaching as a result of that exam question. I've never done this before. Right. And by the way, do you know which step everyone misses? Is the first one. Yeah. Who's at the center? Oh. One of the chlorines. So, guys. Here's the trick. Well, if one of them is central, you could argue that the formula should have been that. You wouldn't do it. You'd do it exactly as they did it. But oh my God, did it throw my kids off. So I had, oh, chlorine, group seven. There's your attachments to and adjust for charge. Total number eight over two. What's my shape instantaneously? Tetrahedral. But now there's a problem, right? Add on your atoms, chlorine at the center, two, uh, two chlorines now to go on, and now two lone pairs. So you uh, That's correct. So what's my shape, please, Oliver? Uh, bent. Is the right answer. Well done, same as water. Good job. And the bond angle for tetrahedral was one of, that's the only number you have to bloody learn. Because now you've got two lone pairs and you minus. For every lone pair, take away 2.5. So my final bond angle is 104.5. Wasn't that just a beautiful exam question? Oh my God, the kids came out going, sir, CL3 plus. And I went, oh, that's really mean. Not many got them. Not many got it. It was really challenging, really hard. Okay. Are you ready for your next one? Let's go for another one. So question number four. So by the way, we just technically did an oddity there because of the, the lone pair issue, right? But I'm gonna do another couple of major, major important ones. But you realize that everything stems from your base shapes. Yeah, so Oliver, can I say really pleased that you know your oddity, your bent? Yeah, because it is part of the second lesson. We were just gonna do base shapes, but we're now dropping into some of those oddities. So let's do the next one. By the way, so important. Guys, NH3, off you go. 
Do you know that this shape has been asked more than any other in the history of A-level chemistry? Isn't that cool? More than any other. More than any other. Okay, nitrogen, five. Add on three, no charge, that's awesome. Oh, base shape, same again, loving this. Add on your H's, ah, and alone. Her, a bunny ear, there we go, shape. Shazza. So you, this one has its very own name. It's per well done. You can actually go that whole hog. They don't need the trigonal bit, annoyingly. Yeah, but well done. It's pyramidal. It's a pyramid. And you can say trigonal pyramidal if you like. Totally fine to do so, but you don't need the trigonal if you don't need it. Just to explain why, it's because look, it's a little triangular based pyramid. Can you see that? Yeah, there's the there's this triangular pyramid shape. Yeah, always like that one. They love ammonia. So there's pyramidal. Um, I'm going to ask Russell what my bond angles will be. Outstanding. Can I just say, I love that you literally are doing what I do. Yeah, you, you just, you go, I know my base shape number. That's all that matters. Minus one for the lone pair, I get 107. We're done. No, it doesn't make any difference. It, it, so, that, by the way, I'm coming to that one example where it does. Okay, the next example. By the way, this is in my oddities, by the way. I don't want to get lost in the oddities because it's in lesson two. Um, we've got base shapes use method to build. Fine. Let's, I'm just going to do, this is in my oddities lesson, guys. I'm happy to do this. The answer is Cyan. No, it doesn't matter where they go. You can put them anywhere you like. Uh, I always give a nice rule, which is it's always nice to put them going up because it's an, it just makes it easy for the diagram wise. But there is one that beats that, and let's do that one together. So this is now phosphorus Cl4, and you check my numbers, check my numbers, check my numbers, check my numbers. Uh, minus, off you go. Right, this one's a very special one. This is in the oddities lesson. Yeah, it's a it's a weirdo. Um, oh God, Sian, it is going to matter. It, Sian, it will matter shortly. <laughs> it matters when there's two. That's where it matters. I'll do that one in a sec, don't worry. So phosphorus, five, plus four. Ah, plus one. Total, 10, two, five. One, two, three, four. Five. So Sian asked, does it matter where the lone pairs go? Well, in this case, it does. So we've got four CLs and five bonds. Yes? So I'm actually going to put the CL here, 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 and here. And the lone pair goes around equatorially. Right. Now this shape, Shazza? Well done. Good man. This is a seesaw. Can everyone see it? Yeah. It's look, it's a little seesaw. It goes backwards and forwards. Yeah. And that one goes back in that direction. See, does that make sense? It's like, yeah. If I had my clip cam, everyone could see me doing this. <laughs> so this is called seesaw. It's a stupid one, but it's in my oddities lesson. Yeah, seesaw. Um, bond angles wise. Ooh, uh, Shazza, what do you think my bond angles would be? Now remember, there were two, this, is a, this was the bipyramidal. There were two bond angles. What are they going to be? Don't overthink it. What were the originals? Nine. Say again. Nine. Nope. Okay, so the two originals. Let's do the two originals. 90 Nine and, 120. and 120. We've now got a lone pair, Shazza. 87.5. 117. 117.5. Just take away 2.5 off them. Nice and easy. How easy is that? Also, Say again. And then also apply oh, uh, that's why I'm doing it. Yeah, it applies everywhere. Except when there's two lone pairs. And you're going to see that now. Can I just point out, by the way, it's actually, a, this, this is, can I just point out, this is an A-level lie now, guys. 
I'm about to teach you, which is really frustrating. Uh, can you explain to Kate why you can't put the load per accident? Uh, because it doesn't go accurate, because uh, it doesn't go actually. If you did, they might actually, they might, they should, they're, they're meant to allow it. If you, if you put it axially up here, if you put it axially, then what happens is the shape name changes. That becomes distorted, distorted trigonal bipyramidal, which is really stupid. Trigonal bipyramidal. Um, and it, the answer is it doesn't go there. It, in reality, it won't go there. Um, right, I can actually give you an explanation for this. The reason being is the equatorial orbitals are shorter than the axial orbitals. What that means is if they're shorter, if you did like, if you did like, let's just draw the orbitals. There's, darn it, there's the first axial, axial. Would you agree that's what trigonal bipyramidal would actually look like? Yeah. So what that means is if you put a lone pair in an equatorial or an axial, which one will actually be closer to the nucleus at the center? The equatorials. The equatorials are closer to the nucleus, so they're going to have a greater attraction to it. So they'll pref preferentially go equatorially. Does that make sense? Now, there is an exception to this rule. And by the way, they don't teach this. This is not A-level. It's first year degree. Yeah. So what, what about, and this is the next question, which is so important to do. So question number six is Z, e, X, E, F, Four. Done. Go. Run it. By the way, uh, number one, this this compound here, Shazza, when you see that, why are you just like, oh, why is this, in, why is this just completely bonkers? Well done. Xenon is a noble gas. And yes, guys, it can be done. But we're reacting it with the Tyrannosaurus Rex of the periodic table. Reacting her with fluorine. Fluorine be crazy. Yeah, fluorine can take electrons from noble gases? Wow, that, that, that'd be crazy. So, run it shape. Eight plus four. Twelve. Two. Six. Immediately, your base shape now appears. Right. Now, this is the exception here at this point because the Fs will go around the middle. You'd actually expect them to go axially, but they don't. Sorry, equatorially, but they don't. They go above and below. The question is, why? And what shape is this now going to be, Oliver? It's in the oddities lesson. Um, square, trigger, uh, planar square. Well okay. done. This is now square planar. Yeah, the shape is square planar. What's the bond angles of it, Oliver? 19. Well and done. Well done. We would expect to have a 2.5 distortion, but we don't because the lone pairs are on opposite sides, so they repel each other equally and cancel out their distortion. Is that okay? Winner! What fun this has been. I would ask, does it matter on CL3 plus where you put the lone pair? No, because it's tetrahedral. It can go anywhere it likes. won't make any difference because it'll always be the same. No matter where you put the two, it's actually the same picture every time. Good question. Right? Oh, shapes are fun. And one example that we need to know where you put long pairs? Uh, no, I can give you another one. Nope, there is another. There is another. PCL3 um, um, 2 minus. There you go. Run it. <clears throat> what was phosphorus again? <laughs> yeah, just checking. Yeah, that works. That works. Another one with two lone pairs. So, five. I don't know why I'm picking all the fives today. It's really weird. I usually give all sulfurs. <laughs> Plus three and add two. Total number, 10, oh. two. Oh, exactly. But all of a sudden it starts to make sense, right? Like you go, oh, base shape. This is trigonal, trigonal bipyramidal. Where are your lone pairs gonna go? Oh yeah. They're gonna go above and below. We know this. It kind of makes sense that they would. And it becomes trigonal planar. 120, you done?
Oliver's on it. Trigonal planar, 120. So my uh, the distortion cancels. So just to mention the double bond thing, yeah, and I also probably ought to mention the transition metals. You cannot run shapes on transition metals. Why? So if I gave you this, if I gave this, is just me adding in a tiny extension. Yeah, if I gave you, um, um, I don't know, it doesn't matter, chromium three, that, I'll give you that. Why can't we now predict its shape? The reason being is, where is chromium? It's in the transition metal. It's got loads of electrons in the outer shell. Yeah, if you run chromium, I shouldn't have picked chromium because it's an oddity. Um, but the problem is that you can't now just grab its, grab its outermost uh, electrons because it's got electrons that are in the D and S. Do you see what I mean? This becomes messy. So just a little nota bene, please, guys. Nota, nota bene? Nota bene, which is... Um, I'm suddenly realized I've got a GCSE, uh, an A-level taster session soon. Nota bene, trans transition metals. Transition metal shapes. Metal shapes. Not clear. Stroke, you can't use this process. Stroke, process useless. Process useless due to due to um, uh, too many electrons due to uh, electrons electrons being in D subshell D sub shell slash too many yeah it becomes complicated does that make sense you can't just we, we, you're constantly bouncing between the people who are in the far right-hand side, yeah, because you can run this process. Can I, can I also, they'd also point out, it might not be covalent. It could possibly be ionic. There's another bullet point to, to add in there, not that you really need it. Right, guys, I will end my lesson there today. Yeah, Hit me. When it's trigonal uh, by pyramidal, you always put on the axial... Uh, the, 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 no, if you've got two lone pairs, they'll always both go axially, yeah? Whereas if you had one lone pair, it'll go equatorially and you get seesaw. And if you have three lone pairs... Oh, well, if you had three pairs, they'd go equatorially and you'd get linear again. I've never seen them do it, but that would be true. That would be what would happen. They'd, they'd definitely go equatorially and it would just become linear. No distortion. They've never done it. That'd be quite cool, wouldn't it? Never seen them do that. I'm still waiting. <laughs> Guys, have an amazing rest of your day. I hope you found it useful, everybody, on YouTube. It's nice to have the complete collection at this point. I'll stop sharing my screen, bring you guys back to there, and say, I hope you have a nice 43 minutes. I hope you found it useful, everybody. Take care. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.